the snap tight assembly system locks end channels to wall sheets without the need for tools or fasteners. To assemble each panel, the perimeter channels are secured to the top and bottom of each sheet. Gently tap the channel over the snap tight lugs and work your way along the sheet. Each channel should be fit to the center of each sheet. Simply tap the channel along until it's aligned. We're going to join our splice channels now. Basically, we're just joining a pair of channels together to make a longer one. There are three parts, a left channel, a right channel, and the joiner. Looking at the part numbers, you'll see that the left channel has the letter L and the right channel has the letter R at the end of the part number. There are also printed arrows pointing to the end of the channel that needs to be joined. The joiner, called a CSJ, needs to be put in the right way to match the channel. Make sure that you've got the long sides matched up. Place the CSJ centered on the end and press in as shown until you hear it click. Repeat this with the other side and then make sure that both halves are butted up against one another. Do this for the rest of the splice channels in the pack before beginning construction. Today I'm going to show you how to assemble your Absco 3 door bike shed. What we need to do first is open up the packaging, take out all the parts, match that up against your parts list in the instruction manual, and if you have any issues, make sure you contact Absco Shed's customer service. They're open seven days. Okay, now we're going to do our rear wall assembly for our uh, three-door bike shed. Um, so we need a H30 sheet, two H31s, and a H29. Um, so for our corner sheet, we've got our H30, remembering um, the pre-drilled holes in the edge of the rib. That goes to the outside. Two H31s. And then we've got our H29. Now this one's got um, five pre-punched holes along this rib, and that's where the front wall um, of the shed um, is going to uh, wrap. So we just need to make sure that that's on that side. Now we just need to attach them together, again, making that sure that the sheets are flush at the ends. Okay, once we've attached all our uh, sheets together, then we need to put our top and bottom channel on. Um, so I've got the 81B channel, again making sure that the small edge goes to the outside. Just gently tap that down, locks the channel into place. Same with this side, again small edge to the outside of the sheets. Okay, what we need to do now is attach our ADD um, to the back wall. Again, small edge facing out. This thing just sits in underneath the rib, like so. Now making sure this ADD channel is all the way down to the bottom channel. And then the pre-drilled holes will line up. And just make sure you get one screw in each. Okay, so that ADD channel that we've attached there under our rear wall, making sure it's flush down the bottom and you'll have a gap uh, between the top of that ADD and the top channel. Um, that's where our triangle piece will go um, when we connect our side walls together. That's our rear wall assembly completed. Okay, now we're gonna do our side wall assembly. Pre-punched holes that are on the edge of that rib, they always go to the outside. The rib where the holes are punched in the center uh, they go towards the middle. So we'll overlap those, making sure we're flush top and bottom with the sheet, and attach them together. Now that we've attached the sheets together, we need to put on our bottom channel, which is our 81F. Again, making sure the small edge to the outside. Fit that over the wall and tap it into place. 
Same with this side. It's very important that you have the small edge of the channel uh, facing the outside of the sheet, um, otherwise it just will not lock into position properly. That's our side wall assembly completed. Okay, now we're gonna do our roof assembly. Um, so we've got our 43 uh, K sheets. So they're all the same. So just make sure that you overlap flush top and bottom and line up your pre-punched holes and screw those together. Okay, once we've got those sheets attached together, then we need to put on our top and bottom channel, which is our 81As, small edge to the outside. Same with this side. Okay, now we need to put on our side uh, lip flashings, which are our 88Js. Again, making sure the small edge goes to the top and it's gonna slide in underneath that channel like so. Same again with this side. So the small edge goes to the top and we slide it in underneath the top part of the channel. Same with the other side and just attach those through the pre-punched holes. And that's our roof assembly completed. Okay, now we're gonna do our front wall assembly. Uh, so we've got our two 34A sheets and we've got our two 89A uh, jams. So what we need to do first is attach our jams onto the sheet, just lining up the pre-punched holes. Just making sure the side of the jam with the pre-punched holes overlaps that rib of the sheet. Okay, once we've got those jams attached to our sheets, we need to put our top and bottom channels on. So I've got the top. Small edge always goes to the outside. Um, so we just snap that channel on. Again, making sure the back edge of the channel slides into that notch piece on the jam, like so. Again, sliding that back channel through the notch. And then gently tapping the rest on. Slide the back of that channel through the notch. Alright, once we've got those channels in place, now we need to put in our top header jam and our bottom inverter channel. So again, you've got your little notch out in your jam there that slides through the 89A, like so, and then tucks underneath the channel. Now you've got pre-drilled holes all the way through the channel and jam, so just line them up. and then pick up the rest in the middle. Once you've got those locked into place, then we need to pick up our channel, jam and sheet through the pre-drilled holes. One on top, then one through underneath. Okay, now it's time to do our bottom inverter channel. Again, small edge goes to the outside and that just nests inside that bottom channel. Line up your outer hole. Pick up your channel jam and sheet, up top and then underneath.
Okay, that's our uh, front wall completed. What we need to do now is um, attach our doors to the front wall. Okay, now we're gonna do our door assembly. Um, so obviously in the bike shed, we've got three doors. We've got a single door that goes on uh, one of the sides, and then we've got a single and a double um, opening on the three meter front. Um, so our two single doors, you have a 58B channel, which goes on the pad bolt side. 58A, which goes on the other side. Obviously, they've got the hinges attached. Uh, and then on our, our double door, our door A, we have a, a jam um, that goes on the uh, pad bolt side, which is an 89C. And then again, we have our 58A hinge channel. We have our 58Cs top and bottom. Uh, what we need to do first is do our 58A and Bs. So attaching these channels is a little bit different. We actually put the big edge goes to the outside, like so, and just line up the pre-punched holes in the channel with the pre-punched holes uh, in the sheet. Okay, once we've got all our side channels on our doors, then we need to put our 58C channels top and bottom. Um, so back to small edge goes to the outside. Okay, and that small edge goes on the outside of the channel. Just tap that on. Okay, and then what we need to do is put some screws in the corners. So we're gonna pick up the 58C channel, the 58A channel, and the sheet. So all three. Same with this side. And then we need to go around and do all the rest of the doors. Okay, now we've got all our channels on, what we need to do is flip all the doors over and put on our uh, diagonal bracing on the back. Okay, what we need to do now is get our jam in the corner of the door and then line up the pre-punched hole in the sheet with the pre-punched hole in the jam. And we'll put a screw in that. Okay, once we've got one screw down in that corner, we need to come up here and do this one. Um, now just screwing up from underneath is just easier at this stage. Then once we get these two in, we can flip the door over and uh, screw all the rest from, from up top. Okay, once we've got that jam in place, we do exactly the same with this one. Again, tuck the jam into the corner, line up the holes. Now last one is tuck that jam in behind the other one, drag it across till the holes line up, like so. Okay, once we've got that bracing uh, locked in there, what we can do now is flip the door over and attach the rest of the screws where the pre-drilled holes are. Okay, once we've got that diagonal bracing locked in and all screwed off from the top, then we need to do exactly the same with the other doors.
Okay, now that all our bracing's in place, um, what we need to do now is put our door plate and our pad bolts on. So our two single doors, they both have a plate and a pad bolt each. Our double door has the plate and the two pad bolts, they go on top and bottom. We'll do the two single doors first. Okay, so you've got some pre-punched holes in the plate and they line up with the pre-punched holes in the door. So just sit the plate over the top. Just put in one screw at this stage, like so. Then you've got your four holes here, matching up with the four holes of your pad bolt. Sit that over the top, like so. Attach the rest of the pad bolt onto that plate. And then put the last screw back in that door plate. Do the same with the other single door. Okay, line up that plate, one screw in, just to hold it in position. And then the last one in the plate. Okay, now we need to put our door plate on our double door. Now it has no pad bolt on this part. Pad bolt go top and bottom. So we can just place that over and screw that off. Okay, once we've got that door plate in place, we need to put our pad bolts top and bottom. So easiest way of doing this is to flip the door back over. Line up the pre-punched holes in the door with the pre-punched holes in the pad bolt. Just lay it over the top like so. Okay, using the little bolts and nylonic nuts that's been provided in the pack. Just feed the bolt through from underneath. Just tighten the nut on. Now it will only go on so far. Um, so just do all the, the rest of them, the other three. Okay, so once you've got them in position, just with a pair of pliers and your impact driver, so impact driver from up in underneath, pliers, just hold on to that nut. Do you hear that lock in? And do the same with the other three. Okay, now we do the same with the other pad bolt. Okay, I've placed the doors uh, on the front wall, obviously making sure you flip the door over, um, and then lining up the three holes in the hinge with the three holes in your 89A jam. So just to attach it, just really re-drill out that center hole. Like so. Attach one rivet. Then the others. Now we need to do the same with the rest of them. Okay, now we're gonna work on our, um, our side wall, our other side wall, which has a door in it. Um, so we need our 34A sheet. Uh, we need our, our two jams, which are our 89A and our 89B. Um, 89A's got the hinge uh, holes already pre-punched. So that goes onto the sheet. Just line up your pre-punched holes with the sheet and the jam. And just attach that jam onto the sheet, like so. Okay, now we need to put on our top and bottom channel. So we've got a, a 53B and a 77F. So our 77F is our bottom channel. Again, making sure the small edge goes to the outside. Now, when you come to the jam, you've got to make sure there's a little cutout in that jam, a little slot that's been cut out. The back of that channel 
slots through that jam like so. Okay, once you've got that one on, we'll do the same with the top. Small edge to the outside. You've got the little slot in the jam. Make sure the back edge of the channel goes in there. Like so. Just tap that on. Okay, now we've got to put in our top and bottom, our header jam at the top, and a little inverted channel down the bottom. So we'll do the channel first, which is our 79C. Again, little edge goes to the outside, and that just nestles inside that bottom channel. Just line up your pre-punched holes. So you've got one in each corner, one in the center. Then we need to put a screw in where we've got our channel jam and our sheet, our 34A sheet. One in there, and then you need to grab the one from in underneath. While we're down the bottom, let's grab our 89B jam, and this whole bottom track just sits over it like so. Do not put a screw in that corner, only from in underneath. Like so. So that's the bottom done, now we need to do the top. So slide your little 90C, you've got a little notch out in your jam here. That just tucks in underneath like so. Just line up your pre-punched holes. Start on one side. Then get your center hole. The far side. Then we come back here and we pick up channel jam and sheet. And then up underneath. And lastly we need to attach this jam. So you've got your little notch out. Just make sure that jam slides in there like so. And again, don't put a screw in the corner, just come in from up underneath. That's our side wall completed. Um, what we need to do now is attach a door um, to this side wall. All right, what we need to do now is attach our door onto our side wall. Um, so I've just placed the door onto the wall. I've flipped it upside down, uh, making sure we're lining up the hinges. You've got three holes there, line up with the three holes in our jam. Once you've got them lined up, just with a drill, with a three mil drill bit, just re-drill out that hole just to give you a bit of clearance. And then with a rivet gun and the rivet, just going to attach that hinge, like so. Drill out the other two holes. Rivet those on as well. Now we do the same the other side. Drill out that center hole first. And then do the two others. Okay, so that's our side wall completed now. All right, we're up to our final construction. 
So first of all, we're gonna join our back wall with our side wall. Uh, so just wrap the corners, making sure that the two holes align. Okay, once we've done the one up the top, now we get the one down the bottom. Okay, now we're going to connect our front wall uh, with our side. Again, just overlap your corners, line up the pre-drill holes and attach your screws. Okay, now we're going to attach our other side wall onto the front. Again, just line up your holes. Okay, now we've got our other side. We've got our 20 mil long screws that were provided in the pack. And what we need to do now is um, pick up the screw through that jam and that back ADD channel that we put on earlier. Um, I start with the center holes. Like so. Just making sure that the sheet goes in behind that jam. You don't want the sheet sticking out, otherwise when you go to put your um, pad bolt and hasp on, the door won't close properly. So make sure that sheet tucks in behind that white jam. Okay, once you've got those two in place, then we can do the bottom. Just re-drill out your hole. Lock that one in. All right, once we've got our four walls um, connected, now we need to put on our uh, gable pieces. Um, you've got a plastic film on the outside of these, so make sure you peel that off before we put them on. Okay, so your gable piece just sits on top of your wall channel like so and just lining up the pre-punched holes in the channel with the pre-punched holes uh, in your gable. Just sit that over like that. Okay, now we need to do the same on this side. So sit our uh, gable piece on top of our side wall. Get the end in first. Okay, now you'll see that we've put some screws in the back uh, when we built the front so they can come out and they'll line up with the holes in the uh, gable. So we'll just take that out. Same with this one, we'll take that out. Okay, after we've put our triangle pieces on, what we need to do now is just put our little uh, L flashes over the back wall, join the back wall and that gable. Um, so small edge goes towards the back wall, larger edge goes towards the gable. And just push that up as high as it'll go against the channel. And just drill a hole. Attach it again up a bit higher. Like 
like so. Then using your pre-drilled holes in your little bit of flashing, just pull it in. And just go through your gable. Do the same to the other side. Again, small edge to the back wall. Push it up as high as it'll go. Drill a hole through there. One up the top. All right, now we're gonna go through that lip flashing and the gable. Just to lock that all in. Okay, now we've got our triangle pieces on and everything's locked into the back wall. Then it's time to throw our roof up, screw that down onto the walls. Okay, once we've got our roof sitting on top of our walls in place, then what we need to do is uh, start from one uh, corner, find the pre-drilled hole between the sheet and the channel, and then just work our way along the front and then do the back wall. Same again with the back wall, just start in a corner, work your way along to the other side. Okay, what we need to do now is put our hasp uh, on the inside of the bottom pad bolt. So just align the hasp so it's halfway on the pad bolt and just drill a hole. Same with the other side. Okay, now we need to put our hasp on our front lock. Again, just align the hasp so it's halfway over that pad bolt. Make a mark. Drill out your hole. Just line it up, drill out your other hole. Okay, now we're going to put a hasp on our side door. Again, just position it over the pad bolt, drill a hole. Using the 20 mils screws provided. You want to make sure you pick up that back channel as well. That's our Absco three door bike shed completed. Before you go ahead and anchor to the slab, measure the distances from the front left to the back right corner and then the other diagonal. When these are equal, the walls are ready to be anchored. Using these brackets as a template, 
go around and carefully mark where the holes are on the slab and on the wall. Drill 3mm pilot holes in the wall centered on these marks. Now switch out to the 10mm drill bit and drill through these pilot holes. Next, take your hammer drill and insert the 10mm masonry drill bit. Drill down through the marks we made earlier. Be sure to go down deep enough for the height of the diner bolt. From the outside of the shed, take the 10mm bolt and poke it inside. You may need a friend to hold it there. Align the angle bracket with the bolt and then tighten the nut by hand. Tighten it further using the shifting spanner. Put the diner bolt through the bracket and into the hole in the slab. Tighten this nut on the diner bolt with a shifting spanner. Now that this has been done at all positions, the structure is anchored 